just a general introduction to IR. We use IR as a technique to identify what your compound is by looking at different functional groups that show up on the spectra. Uh, so we have two IRs here in Monet. This guy right here, and then this guy right here, back here. Uh, this one we use with the uh, sodium fluoride plates, uh, as well as with the KBR pellets. And this one here we use for directly loading solid and liquid samples, and it's called an ATR. We're going to learn ATR. It's probably the easiest way, which is pretty exciting. So the first thing you're going to want to do is turn on the Omnic program. So just double click it on the computer right here. This will come up and it's just saying that you're using ATR, so you press OK. You can maximize the window. Now the first thing you want to do for this is collect an air background. So you press collect background, and it says please prepare to collect background. We're ready, so you press OK. And it will scan 16 scans. And this is what you normally expect an air background to look like. It's very, very messy, but this is what it should look like. And if you're ever unsure, there's uh, an air background uh, posted on the wall. Okay, so we're going to add that to the window. Okay, yes. And now we're ready to actually look at our sample. So we take a small amount of sample, and our little scoopula or spatula, just about this much. And then we want to put that on the crystal. So there's a crystal right in the middle of the metal disc. And you want to make sure to be very careful and not to scratch any of that equipment with the, the spatula. So use something a bit more dull to gather um, all the solid to the center crystal, like the edge of a Q-tip. So you can just do this. All right. Now we're going to crush our sample solid on the crystal by turning this uh, to the left and then turning this to the right until you feel it click. So you might have heard the click, but I felt the click. Um, and then we're ready to collect the sample. So if you just press collect sample, okay. You can change the spectrum title if you'd like to, but I usually just use the date and time. Okay. And it will collect by scanning 16 times as well. Okay, so it asks if you want to add it to the window and you say yes. You'll want to begin by removing your background. So you can just click on any line of that spectra. It will highlight in red. And then you can press clear up here. And now it's gone. Then you're going to want to find your peaks because you want to know uh, what functional groups are present. So you can press the find peaks button. And you're going to want to make sure that you get all of the peaks. So you can adjust the line by clicking above all the peaks. Excellent. And then you can press replace. So that will replace the old spectra. Uh, the last thing you're going to want to do, especially if you're printing, is press the full scale button. Because as you can see, some of the measurements have actually been cut off um, due to the scale. So if you press full scale, you'll be able to see all of the uh, wave numbers. Then you can just press print. And it will come up at that lovely printer right there. Okay, so now to clean the ATR. We just want to kind of go in reverse. So we're going to turn this to the left until it's out of the way and then move that handle over with our hands. Uh, we use isopropanol for cleaning the ATR. It's really great, it gets everything, lifts everything off. Um, this little ATR cleaning bin is where you can find all of the things you need. You'll want to grab a cotton ball, and then you'll want to get that cotton ball full of isopropanol. So we'll get some isopropanol on it. You pipettes full. That should be good. And then we'll start by wiping this region, so kind of the plate in the crystal. And you want to wipe it down really well with the isopropanol. Then you can also use the same cotton swab to clean the top part. So you want to make sure that you thoroughly scrub this. And then you can wait until it's dry, uh, just to make sure that there's no more solid on there that you can't see. So we'll just wait until it dries. And I think it looks pretty good. So that is how you use an ATR. I'm going to show you guys how to use the salt plates for IR on the machine that you were shown. So if you have a solid sample, you're going to want to take a small amount from your sample vial. 
and place it inside this tiny mortar and pestle, like so. You want to make a paste with new jol, which acts as the background. So you just take a couple of drops and place them right inside. And then mix it together. Like so. Then you take the salt plates, never put them in water, never put them in water, and you want to spread a small amount, a couple of dots, on the plate like so. Then you take the second plate and you squish them together and turn them back and forth a couple of times in order to spread that paste throughout the plates. Now if you have a pure liquid sample, so not something in solution, a pure liquid sample, you would directly apply that liquid sample onto the plates. The plates then go in the holder, like so, so the top part comes right off, and then you can just plop the plates in carefully, flatten them out, and then gently put this back on top. And your sample is ready. And then we'll take it over to the spectrometer. So once you've collected your new doll background and you're ready to load your sample, so you can just take your sample inside the plates and the holder, insert it into the slit within the machine, like so, and then cover it with the cover. And you're ready to go. Today, we're going to learn how to make the KVR wafers uh, for a different type of IR analysis. So, first of all, you're going to get this bolt, and this bolt, and barrel. Uh, and they're going to be really hot because you're going to get them out of the drying oven, so make sure that you are very careful when you handle them. The first thing you want to do is insert one bolt into the barrel until two threads are visible above the barrel. Okay. Like so. Then you need to weigh out your KBR for analysis. So then you can get the anhydrous KBR powder out of this little holder. And to the analytical balance. So we weighed out 200 milligrams of the KBR powder, as well as 2 milligrams of our sample to be analyzed. Using the mortar and pestle, we want to mix those together really, really well and grind them up. So just pour them in here. Next, using a spatula or a scoopula, you want to pile this into two separate piles. So you can just do that on a weighing paper, like so. And you want those piles to be even. So kind of like so. You only have one of those piles to put inside the barrel, so we'll get rid of one of them. With half of the mixture, you just pour it right in the barrel, like so. Good. Then you want to place it in the holder. So this will help you tighten the top bolt and make that plate. So turn the top bolt with your finger until it's snug and nice and in there. Okay, good and snug. Then you want to use the torque wrench and slowly tighten the bolt to 25 foot-pounds. So if you look on here, there's a scale and you want it to go up to 25. So there. Good. So you want to allow that to set for one minute, so magical one minute. So if you remove the bolt, you do the opposite of what you just did. Like so, and then you should just be able to remove it with your fingers pretty easily. Then you want to tap out any excess KBR, so just give it a little light tap on both sides. And 
as you can see, there's a little plate formed on the inside of the barrel. All right, so you just have to put the barrel inside this black holder, and then we'll take it over to the spectrometer. You want to insert that plate holder with the barrel right inside the second slit, just like you would for an IR with the salt plates. And then cut it back over, and you're ready to go.